Thank you all for that wonderful prelude this morning. Appreciate that. Welcome to the Little Home Church. Today is the 21st Sunday after Pentecost and a day within Protestantism that oftentimes we celebrate Reformation Sunday as well. We welcome everybody here this morning, including those watching online from near and far away. We're an open and affirming church, folks from all walks of life, regardless of race, sexuality, or any other perceived differences can always find a place here at our table. You are important to us. If you are a visitor, please fill out a visitor's card and put it in the offering plates as they go by later. If you're worshiping online with us for the first time, send us an email. Uh, today, fellowship hours provided by the mayors after church. Flowers are uh, provided today by Mary Jean's four daughters in honor of her 89th birthday. And we want to thank Brian Martisowski, one of our new members of the church, for being pulpit associate. Carissa was to be pulpit associate today, but she's um, ill. For this week, this afternoon, we have our trunk or treat from 4 to 6. So we'll gather at 4 o'clock here in the sanctuary for a brief spooky concert. And I have heard that um, Cousin It from the Adams family, along with a number of other uh, celebrities, are going to be here for our concert. So be sure to... Um, be sure to be here for, at 4 o'clock, and then you'll go outside. There'll be trunks decorated and lined up for some treats. And for everyone, there'll be a chili supper as well if you want to come in for a cup of chili and um, get warm in the parish hall. Next Sunday is All Saints Sunday. And so this is the last, uh, the last day for us to fill one of these forms out. If you know somebody who has uh, passed away in the last year, uh, you want to um, put their name and uh, birth and death date on it, and we will have a service next week honoring all saints. You'll also see a form in here for SIS, uh, Sisters in Spirit, and they will be um, uh, having a pie sale this year along with the Holiday Bazaar, so be sure to get your orders in for that too. Uh, Thanksgiving dinners, you'll see this in the bulletin. We are doing um, dinners once again for needy families. Uh, for $30, you can purchase an entire uh, turkey dinner with all the trimmings for that. That money goes to our, our food pantry down the road and um, they distribute the, the food from there. And then again, we're doing college care packets. So we'd like to get these out before Thanksgiving to all our college students. If you have any grandchildren, nieces, nephews, um, college students here from church that um, we should remember, please fill out that form and get it into Lori this week as well. Daffodils are being sold. Uh, once again, we have a wonderful uh, variety of daffodils this year. And so you can see Emily Miller about that. If you don't have a place to plant daffodils, um, you can do what I did and just buy them, and then Emily makes sure that the daffodils get uh, planted around the village, and it makes for a lovely spring for us all. Are there any other announcements? If so, raise your hand. Our ushers are ready with microphones. Oh, sorry, girls, no takers. All right, at this time, I encourage you just for a second to close your eyes. Take in a few deep breaths. So we notice the change in the season outside with the beautiful fall colors. We'll focus on change and reformation in our own lives here in the service today. Bring somebody to mind today that you'd like to ask a special blessing on. Be aware of the Spirit of Christ and feel the Spirit of Christ in this service today through the lighting of the candles, through our songs, our prayers, our words. Amen.
morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Come from every direction, north, south, east, and west. Let us welcome and worship Jesus in this sacred place. Come bearing all your gifts behind the scenes, quirky, unique, and more. Let us welcome and worship Jesus with zealous authenticity. Come with all your identities, race, gender, sexuality, and all. Let us welcome and worship Jesus with our whole selves.
Please join me in the prayer of invocation. Welcome us, loving Jesus, as we now welcome you into our hearts, minds, and worship. Let us transform and be transformed by each other so that we might perceive your presence among us ever more clearly. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of transformation and new life. We crowd each other out, clamoring for glimpses of Jesus and glances from Jesus. We get caught up in the hype of the crowds. Who wouldn't? However, in so doing, we neglect the quiet opportunities to welcome Jesus into our homes and lives. Amen. Hear these words of grace. We need not fret over mistakes and mischances of years and days past. God is forgiving and gracious. We are liberated from the things we cannot change and empowered to influence the things we can. No matter where we may go, God is always near. May the peace of Christ be with you. We encourage placing your hands on your hearts as you greet those around you.
How are you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, that's what it was. All right, if the boys and girls will come up. Okay, what have I got here? Plato, and I've kind of formed it into a ball, right? Yeah, it's not very even, but but it's it's kind of the shape. It's round. It's a it's a ball. It's a lumpy ball. There we go. So, Pierce, can you put this? Can you can you form it into a pancake now? All right. Thank you. How about putting it back into a ball? Pass it to Clara. Clara, make it a pancake again. Very good. And roll it back into a ball for me, if you would. Thank you. So we changed it around. One of the words we can think about for change is we reformed it, right? It was in the form of one thing, and we reformed it. So today is a Sunday that we think about called Reformation. And, Reform and Reformation goes back a long, long, long time ago. And you guys are too young to remember, but um, there was a big anniversary of it a few years ago. And we actually got an old door, and we did this. Martin Luther was a priest in the church, and he realized the church was doing some not so good things. They were charging people money, like to be forgiven and things, and all sorts of things that weren't quite right. And so he finally got, got sick of it, and God had spoken to him, and he went to the door of the church in Wittenberg, Germany, and he nailed what was called the 95 Theses up on the door and said, we've got it start doing things new. We've got to reform. And so we thought of that as reformation. And from there, we had the Lutheran Church, which is named after him, and lots of other churches sprang up from that. So we always need to think about change. It's good to change. And sometimes we do things one way, but sooner or later, we learn that maybe there's a better way or a different way to do things. And we need to try new things to change and always improve. And that goes with our Bible story today. Um, there was a Bible story about a man by the name of Zacchaeus. Has anybody heard that story before? Kind of? Okay. Zacchaeus, was um, he, wasn't a, he wasn't a person who was very tall. And so there were all these crowds gathered to come see Jesus when he was going through Jericho. And Zacchaeus, in order to see, and maybe not to be seen as well, because he wasn't well liked. He was what was called a tax collector. And tax collectors, they overcharged people again. They like, like you owe taxes for something, but then they'd ask for more money on the side that they could put in their pocket. And that wasn't right. And that's part of who Zacchaeus probably was. So he climbs up in this tree, but Jesus sees him. And Jesus asks him to come down. And he tells Zacchaeus he's going to go to his house. Now there's more to the story, and we'll tell it in a minute. But there is a song about it. And so um, choir's going to help me here with this, and we're going to sing it. And if anybody out here remembers it from Sunday school, <laughs> let's sing it all together. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He climbed up into a sycamore tree, for he wanted the Lord to see. 
And as the pe was passing by, he, he looked sleep, and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. Brian, will you hand me my phone up there? We can do this better. <laughs> Here we go. Everybody sing good. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree. And he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. For I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree. And he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. For I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. There we go. Your, song, your phone's a great singer. My phone is a great singer. How about that? That's what we should have done in the first place. Whoops. All right. So Jesus goes to Zacchaeus' house. And we don't know everything they talked about. But Zacchaeus had a realization that when Jesus was talking to all the people and talking about the things that he talked about, which was caring for other people, caring for people who didn't have enough food, who were poor, who needed help, who needed love and comfort, Zacchaeus realized he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. And so he, he told Jesus that day, I'm changing my ways. He said, I'm, I'm going to repay anybody that I've overcharged. And he said, and you know what? I'm not just going to give them the money back that they deserve. I'm going to give them four times the amount. And that's really, really important. And today in our world, we're kind of looking at things like that too. We're looking at ways that maybe historically we've done things that we shouldn't do. We certainly are in the environment. We're thinking about ways that we haven't treated Mother Earth so good and ways that we need to get better at that. And so that's a really good thing and an important lesson that we can learn from Zacchaeus in the Bible. Okay? Well, thanks. I'm going to let you guys go on to Sunday school today, and we will see you afterwards. So this is a time in our worship service where we come to a time of prayer. And before we pray, we always ask for any joys or concerns that might be out there. I'll get us started with a few. I think we want to remember um, everyone in St. Louis and um, those students in that school uh, who were victims of a shooting this week as well as their families. Continue, people are struggling from the effects of Hurricane Ian and other natural disasters. I want to keep Ron, Ruth, and Carly in our prayers as well. Are there any other prayer requests this morning? Any joys or concerns? We have one right here. Yes, Sue. Oh. Um, I would like prayers for my grandson who's going on Tuesday for a tumor in his, uh, in his bone and his shin. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Prayers for my niece, Kara, as she's um, having her chemo. It's not going well for her. 
Anybody else? Thank you, Nancy. All right. Let's bow our heads and go to prayer. Good and gracious God, you are our safe place to hide. You are our mighty fortress. You are our ever-present help in time of need. We can and do turn to you in the midst of our troubles. And Lord, our world is full of difficulties. We feel afraid, but it does not overcome us because we know that we can put our trust in you. Your love and grace are like streams of water in the desert. Your joy comes splashing down upon us. You refresh, renew us like rain coming down on the earth. Bring your water of life to those who are thirsty, living in a dry and weary land. Where there are wars, bring your peace. Where there is starvation, fill those empty bellies. Where there is despair, bring your hope. Where there is abuse, bring your tender mercies. Where there is poverty, bring charity. Where there is illness, bring your healing. Where there is grief, bring your gentleness. And where there is injustice, bring your justice. Lord, you are a mighty fortress, our strong deliverer. In you we put our trust and release ourselves into your hands. Heavenly Father, do not let us bury ourselves into the bunkers of this is how it has always been. Give us courage to look for reformation when we've become too set in our ways. Do not let us be afraid of change. Father, please give us courage and faith to give room for your spirit in our lives and the lives of our families and ultimately in the life of our church. And as you do that, please fill us with your love and joy so that we can be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. God, this morning, we bring to you those families in St. Louis who are grieving. We think of all the people in our country affected by Hurricane Ian and other natural disasters. Be with Ron, be with Ruth, be with Carly. God, we want to remember this morning Sue's grandson will be having surgery this week for a tumor on his chin. Be with this young man. Guide the surgeon's hands. Be with his family. Help him to feel your love and your strength. Be with Kara, Nancy's niece going through chemo. Be with her in this difficult, challenging time. Be with those who are there to support her, that they may be strong for her and show your love through themselves to her. Dear God, we pray all of this knowing that you are hearing us better than we are speaking. We pray this in all your holy names as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's first scripture lesson is Isaiah chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of ram and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. 
When you come to appear before me, who asks from this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. Bringing offerings is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation. I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. The second scripture lesson is Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. He entered Jericho as he was passing through it. A man there named Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on the account of the crowd he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down, and he was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be with a guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. For the word in Scripture, for the word among us, for the word within us. Thanks be to God. Look ahead. As you heard in the children's sermon, today is Reformation Sunday. Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the door of the Church of Wittenberg. This was the start of a new movement within the church to do right things that had gone wrong and to correct unfair practices. Both our Old Testament and New Testament lessons have aspects of change and reformation in them today. In the Isaiah passage that Brian just read, God is done with the burnt offerings and sacrifices. What God wants is this. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Come, now let us argue it out, says the Lord. Even God is willing to argue about those things. In our gospel lesson from Luke, Jesus and his entourage are traveling through Jericho. It's a town just outside of Jerusalem, and by the end of this chapter in Luke, Jesus will arrive at the holy city, the de destination toward which he set his face towards ten chapters ago. And we've been on this journey through the entire gospel of Luke to the holy city, to Jerusalem. Located on a major trade route, Jericho was an important custom center. And so it makes sense that the chief tax collector would live there. The term chief indicates that Zacchaeus managed a sizable group of officials, many of whom would collect imperial taxes on trade goods. They pay the empire up front and then collect taxes in excess of those payments, sometimes significant excess, to make their living. Understandably, as we saw last week, Tax collectors in the first century Palestine had rotten reputations. Many Jews considered them corrupt traitors, both helping the Romans and enriching themselves in the process. 
At the beginning of Luke's gospel, when tax collectors ask John the Baptist what they should do, he admonishes them. Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you, implying that there probably was widespread extortion at that time. But on the other hand, according to Luke, Jesus frequently eats with tax collectors, recruits one to do his inner circle of disciples, and argues that they deserve mercy through some of his most famous parables, including the so-called prodigal son, and last week's story of the two contrasting prayers, the prayer of the Pharisee and the prayer of the tax collector. For Luke, tax collectors are the lost sheep, rescued by the good shepherd, a theme that culminates in this week's story of Zacchaeus. But Zacchaeus also represents another group that figures frequently in Luke, the rich. Luke reports Zacchaeus was rich. From Mary's Magnificat to Jesus' woe to you who are rich, to the story of the rich man and Lazarus, Luke repeatedly underscores the dangerous burdens of wealth. Indeed, in this passage, between last week's readings and this week, Jesus encounters a rich ruler who de declines discipleship because he cannot bring himself to sell all that he owns and distribute the money to the poor. How hard it is, Jesus laments, for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of heaven. Indeed, it is easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard it said, then who can be saved? And Jesus replied, what is impossible for mortals is possible for God. To tend to picture Jesus the Good Shepherd searching out lost sheep who are impoverished, underprivileged, and disinherited, and sure enough, this is his signature move, but here, near the conclusion of his public ministry, Jesus also pursues a lost sheep who is both rich and allegedly corrupt. And in any case, plays a key role in an oppressive system of imperial occupation. Jesus does declare, woe to you who are rich. But in this week's story, he seeks to restore a notorious rich person to community. Jesus does say it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. But in this week's story, he seeks to facilitate exactly that to bring salvation to Zacchaeus' house, to make the impossible, a tangible, a present possibility. The salvation Jesus brings to Zacchaeus' house involves a prospective reunion between him and his neighborhood, either because Zacchaeus will now pivot towards generosity and justice, or because his neighbors will, as they come to understand him better, or indeed, a bit of both. Jesus comes, as he puts it, to seek out and save the lost, rich and poor alike, to transform hearts and lives, and ultimately to make the flock whole again. If this seems impossible in a fragmented, polarized world, so full of inequity, inequality, corruption, and contempt, well, we can understand that skepticism. But remember what Jesus says about camels and needles. What is impossible for mortals is, impo is possible for God. And today, hearing the story of Zacchaeus, how many of us participate in systems of oppression and refuse to confront them because of the benefits we might receive? How often do we reject the possibility of reform out of fear of how we might be impacted by the resulting change? How many times do we come into our worship space satisfied to observe Jesus from a distance and never seek a more intimate and meaningful encounter because we just know that the closer we get to Jesus, the closer he wants to get to us. Zacchaeus was lost. 
hidden in a tree and trapped in a life that alienated him from his siblings of humanity. Jesus finds him, saves him from that life. Today, salvation has come to this house. Salvation is a kingdom principle in which the powers of this world are overcome by the power of holy love. The journey through Jericho and other places will eventually lead Jesus to the cross. Not because the Creator wanted the Beloved to suffer, but because humanity demonstrated the capacity to resist love. And that required Jesus to persist in his journey to its inevitable conclusion. But on that way, we found Jesus has these profound encounters where the people he meets enter the journey with him. The disciples were his first converts. The repentant thief on the cross joined in the last minutes of his life. And Zacchaeus was found on the way. There are so many lonely folks in this world like Zacchaeus. Loneliness can kill. Even before the global pandemic of COVID-19, Cigna released a study revealing that loneliness had reached epidemic proportions in America. 46% of us are sometimes or always lonely. 27% rarely or never feel as though they are people. there are people who really understand them. And 43% sometimes or always feel that their relationships are not meaningful. These are our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, our family, our friends. And folks are suffering. It is not good. The research about loneliness says that poor social connection is a vicious cycle. But lonely makes us less able and less likely to reach out. So if you're part of that 54% that feels well-connected, at least in this moment, it's up to you. It's up to us. Call, text, show up. Zacchaeus was not attempting to be found. In fact, by positioning himself in the tree, he diminished the possibility of having a direct encounter with Jesus. I'll close with a story about Nobel Prize winner Lema Gubawi. She founded a women's nonviolent peace movement that helped stop the second Liberian civil war in 2003. One night, she heard a clear spiritual call. She says, I had a dream. I didn't know where I was. Everything was dark. I couldn't see a face, but I heard a voice and it was talking to me, commanding me. Gather the women to pray for peace. Gather the women to pray for peace. Her dream became the Christian Women's Peace Initiative. She recalled, it wasn't always easy. Women who have suffered for nearly as long as they can remember came to a point where they only looked down, not ahead. But as we kept working, women began to look up, and listen and look ahead. No one had spoken to them this way before. We handed out flyers, she said. The flyers said, we are tired. We are tired of our children being killed. We are tired of being raped. Women, wake up. You have a voice in the peace process. She went on to say, as the women gathered together, my fear, depression, and loneliness were finally totally wiped away. Others who felt the way I did stood beside me. I wasn't alone anymore. And I knew in my heart that everything I had been through, every pain, had led me to this point. Leading women to fight for peace was what I was meant to do with my life. In order for Zacchaeus to be made whole, he needed the invitation from Jesus to change his ways to change his life. His reformation compelled him to make repair and reparations. If I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much, he said. Zacchaeus upends the rules of engagement and exploitation. Like the Liberian women, 
Zacchaeus stopped looking down and began looking ahead. That's what happens or can happen when we welcome Jesus and allow Jesus to move into any aspects of our lives. When we welcome Jesus, we not only transform and reform, we become agents of transformation and reformation. And then we make the invitations. We make the invitations. We participate actively in the kingdom and good things start to happen on earth as it is in heaven. May Christ's will be done. Look up. Look ahead. Amen. This is the time in a worship service where we actively and intentionally take part in support of the ministry of Christ. If you are a member of the Little Home Church, we encourage you to continue your pledges and financial support. And if you are visiting with us today, we welcome your gifts as well. You may donate by cash, check, Venmo, PayPal. The QR codes for Venmo and PayPal are listed in the bulletin for your convenience. For those of you who may be watching this on YouTube later in the week, the information is on the screen at the close of service. Please join me in the offertory prayer. When the crowds around Zacchaeus blocked his view of Jesus, he anticipated where Jesus would be naked and spaced in the sycamore tree to increase his ability to see. His foresight became a blessing as Jesus saw Zacchaeus and invited him down from the tree. Likewise, let us look ahead to where we can meet and welcome Jesus into our many ministries by generously sharing our various gifts today. Thank you for choosing to receive these gifts that we now share with you, gracious God. Bless each offering, including our very selves, and let every single one be given in service to you. Amen.
Receive the benediction, but before you do, please join us for fellowship afterwards. Um, I'm just going to say this, there are donuts today. So, 
for all that God can do within us and for all that God can do without us. Thanks be to God. For all in whom Christ lived before us, for all in whom Christ lives beside us. Thanks be to God. For all the Spirit wants to bring us and for where the Spirit wants to send us. Thanks be to God. May the God in you, the divine image to which you are made, see the God in me and all of the wonderful souls and saints that will cross our paths in the days that lie ahead. Amen. Shalom, shalom, shalom.